the week three waiver wire, all right? It's filled with a lot of fool's gold. This might actually be the week to let your idiot league mates pound the wire. Use all the fab dollars, all right? Because there's a lot of injuries going on in the NFL, but there haven't been a lot of injuries that have led to uh, a lot of fantasy points per se, at least not anybody available on the waiver wire yet. You know, you had the Jordan Masons, et cetera, but they should have been drafted. And there are a lot of handcuffs out there that I think you can pick up. And there were some injuries to running backs this week in particular that we'll talk through. We're going to talk through every single player that we think is relevant that's trending up. We're going to talk about the trending down players, guys that I think you can drop off of your roster and then hit you with some fab suggestion. But suggestion number one would literally be go take half a passing yard. All right. They've got Aaron Rodgers for Thursday night football at half a passing yard on underdog fantasy okay if you are a new depositor on underdog fantasy and you use our code bdge you're gonna see this free square of 0.5 passing yards for aaron Rodgers. you're gonna see a cd lamb free square for this upcoming sunday and you're also gonna get access to the big dog membership absolutely free when you deposit on underdog fantasy ten dollars or more with our code which gets you access to our waiver wire rankings available right now on bdge dot co best deal in the goddamn marketplace let's get into the video all right so we've got to start off with the kansas city running back situation isaiah pacheco fractured his fibula whatever he's gonna be out for a while six to eight weeks most likely he can return for the fantasy playoff so if you got an ir spot i would uh allow him to kind of just sit there for the time being and let him marinate unfortunately you're gonna have to figure out how to push through now Kansas City situation's a little funky because you've got Carson Steele, who is like a fullback running back hybrid. Now, when Pacheco left the game, Carson Steele got all seven of the running back carries. They obviously signed Samaji P. Ryan late in the summer to be more of like the pass blocking, passing down back. Now they are meeting with Kareem Hunt, who is in the building and in the facility today, and they might pick him up. I wouldn't be surprised if they've also reached out to uh, Jarek McKinnon or maybe inquired uh, about like Damian Pierce in Houston or Miles Sanders in Carolina or one of those types of things. So I would equally not be surprised if they continued with Steele and Pirine until like Clyde Edwards Hilaire comes back or brought in Kareem, uh, Kareem Hunt. Now, Kareem Hunt's been terrible the last couple of years, Cleveland, whatever, last year. And I don't know if he's going to be able to recapture that. What I will say is like Kansas City and Andy Reid have been one of the best, you know, programs and situations in order to capitalize on underwhelming, talented backs. Because you look at Carson Steele and Samaja P. Ryan, they're like the opposite of explosive. I'm not expecting Kareem Hunt to uh, be a dude that recaptures his 2017, 2018 form, but he's already really familiar with the system in the scheme obviously you know played there for a long time played under Andy Reid played in this offensive scheme like won't have to pick that stuff up so conditioning wise maybe he needs to ramp up but in terms of like knowing what he needs to do in this offense he won't so I think it may be very very big brain of me to want to target Kareem Hunt what I will say is I will prioritize Carson Steele over Samaj P. Ryan. I think with the injury to Pacheco What's going to happen is Kansas City is just going to go very, very pass heavy. They're they're not going to be able to lean on their running backs. I don't think you'll ever see a game where either of these backs get more than like 12, 13 carries in a game. Uh, I don't think they're going to make that a priority for their offense like it had been up until this point where like Pacheco was just getting 20 carries a game, uh, which could be problematic for Kansas City, like forcing passes again like they kind of did last year. Um, but I think it'll lead to a lot more passing and, and not like dump offs. I think Samaj P. Ryan's like a last case scenario type of guy for uh, Patrick Mahomes. So as I would rank it right now, Carson Steele would be my one over Samaj P. Ryan. Steele would be a dude I would probably look to spend anywhere in like the 8 to 10% range. He's going to be the goal line guy. He got a couple goal line carries in this previous week, even when Pacheco was playing. So I would prioritize him. But if I have to spend more than that, I would let someone else do that. Because again, they might sign a veteran by the time that this video even drops, like an hour after I film it. They probably get Clyde Edwards Hilaire back uh, after week four, but I also don't want to like pencil it or sharpie that in because Clyde is out with a mental issue that he's dealing with right now, and you can't put a timetable on that. Yeah, they put him on the IR so they didn't have to take up an active roster spot. That doesn't mean like he's going to be fully fixed by week five and ready to go. So I think there is probably a little bit more optimism on Clyde than you probably should give him credit for but it's a really you know difficult moving parts type of situation here so Steele would be my one uh Samaj is probably in like the four to five ish percent fab range if Kareem Hunt does end up signing I would probably throw him about 
an even split with Steele because Steele obviously has to come down now a little bit, and Cream Hunt would would jump P Ryan for me, right? Like everyone's like, oh, Cream Hunt might not be in shape. Cream Hunt uh, is just coming in off the street. Like P Ryan just got cut and then got signed at the end of the summer, so it's not like he's a veteran with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, I think Cream Hunt would take some pass catching work. I think Kareem Hunt could end up being an early down guy. I, I think this will end up being a shitty three down committee, unfortunately. So it would probably put me somewhere in the range of like six to 8% for Hunt, six to 8% for Steele, but like probably an avoid situation if you have to overpay in this instance. So if we continue down the trending tab, we've got Quentin Johnson here who it looked like someone took his jersey off and, and put it on to Mike Williams. Uh, because Quentin Johnson actually looked good for the first time in quite a while. Six targets, five catches, 51 yards, and two touchdowns. And he is running a lot of routes. Like, his usage is there. Lad McConkey has played okay. Josh Palmer was banged up in this one a little bit. DJ Chark's on the IR. So I think Quentin Johnson is probably the play as it relates to outside receivers. Maybe they're just going to try to force him continuously onto the field. I think watching the film, and if you're actually watching him play, it doesn't look good much different like he's made some catches obviously but he still drops some passes his route running still looks very very raw uh, but these yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter in a, in a one-year sprint of fantasy football that type of stuff might not matter if you're forced into a great situation and the usage tied to Justin Herbert who doesn't really have a lot of other targets could be worse now they play against Pittsburgh in this up, up, upcoming week. Joey Porter Jr. is a beast. They get KC, and then they get a bye, and then Denver, Patrick Sertan, et cetera. So it's not like you're really going to want to play Quentin Johnson, but maybe he develops. Maybe he becomes the first-round pick that people wanted him to be. Regardless, I'm probably not spending more than 5 to 6% of my fab on him if I'm really desperate at wide receiver, uh, and, and that's – that's where I'll leave that. Jalen Naylor's a cool little pickup. You know, he keeps scoring touchdowns in place of Jordan Addison. We don't haven't really heard anything about Addison's ankle injury. So that tells me it's relatively serious and he could be out another couple of weeks. So Naylor, he could, you could do worse in deeper leagues. Juwan Jennings is the one I really want to talk about outside of the Rams wide receiver situation. Now, let's cover that first because Puka Nakua is on the IR. Cooper Cup looks like he's trending to go onto the IR with his ankle injury. This opens up the Rams receiving group. Obviously, Demarcus Robinson is the one there. He runs the most routes. Tyler Johnson has run the second most routes there. Colby Parkinson's been relatively targeted by Matt Stafford. Where I think there might be some value in terms of pickup, I don't think Demarcus Robinson's too available on the waiver wire right now. If he is, he would be my top add of the receiving group for the Rams. I will say this. The Rams offensive line is in hell right now. Matt Stafford took five sacks from the Arizona Cardinals, who are one of like the worst pass rush teams in the NFL. I tweeted this out yesterday. The pass blocking grade for the Los Angeles Rams through two weeks is 29.2 per PFF. That's on a scale of, I think, zero to 100. Over the last 15 years, they have data pretty much dating back to 2008, 2007. The worst pass blocking unit over a season was... Last year, the New York Giants were up at like 43. So the Rams are way worse right now than the Giants were over the course of last season. Obviously, it's a two-game sample size, but I want you all to know how bad of a state this Rams offensive line is with half of their players on the IR right now. It's really bad there, which gives me pause for dudes like Demarcus Robinson, for dudes like Tyler Johnson, who aren't this like around-the-line-of-scrimmage separator type players, where Tutu does separate a little bit better and it is more quick-footed and you could run more screens for him and maybe do some of the things that you were doing for like a Cooper Cup. Tutu also had a really nice little like start to last season when Cooper Cup was out. So I would prioritize Marcus Robinson if he's available because he'll probably end up getting the most targets. But I think that Tutu Atwell might be a sneaky good ad in PPR leagues uh, over a guy like Tyler Johnson. He didn't run as many routes as Tyler Johnson has up to this point, but I think just given the state of the offense, we might see an uptick for him and not Tyler Johnson here. So I might prioritize him over uh, Tyler Johnson. But on that point, we're talking about injured wide receivers, Debo Samuel now pulls his calf, strains his calf, and he's going to be out multiple weeks, they say, probably somewhere in the three to four week range or two to four week range, whatever, joins Christian McCaffrey. Now, Jawan Jennings becomes the wide receiver two here. And Jawan Jennings is a pretty versatile player. I think you could use him in a variety of ways that you would normally use, like a C-Mac or a Debo Samuel. Obviously, Ayuk's targets should see a big uptick. George Kittle's targets should see a big uptick. They're probably going to go very run heavy with Jordan Mason, who's been great so far this year. But Juwan Jennings, 
I think has a sneaky chance to be a fantastic pickup right now for the next month of the season. And I might actually prioritize him over Demarcus Robinson. When I say it probably, I would. I think in my fab suggestion in our waiver wire rankings, which again are available on bdge.co right now, cheapest way to get them is by going to Underdog Fantasy, code BDGE. When you deposit $10 or more, you'll get our membership which is our weekly rankings, our waiver wire rankings, a private Q&A on Saturday for the entire season, just for depositing one time on Underdog. I have Jawan Jennings as a 10% fab suggestion, which is tied with Demarcus Robinson. So they're both at the top of the list, but I really like where Jawan Jennings is right now. And they've just trusted him. They've been using him for the last like four years. Okay, so uh, I, I really like Jawan Jennings. As we continue down the list, Mike Kosicki, I think that's just completely fraudulent what he did last week. Like, He's still playing fewer than 50% of the snaps. The Chiefs defense was clearly zoned in on just taking away Jamar Chase, which led to about 14 or 15 overall tight end receptions. So I'm not buying the Gesicki hype. In super flex leagues, you can target Skylar Thompson. You could target Andy Dalton. I would definitely prefer Andy Dalton. Uh, he seems to be a you know a medium floor low ceiling quarterback two for the time being obviously Carolina is going to be a lot more smooth with him under center someone who could actually fucking deliver passes and they have a sneaky good weapons group uh with Deontay Johnson Xavier Leggett Adam Thielen like I think Dalton will be serviceable for you as a QB2 in Superflex if you're really really desperate there where Skylar Thompson I don't think he's gonna be as bad as most people think like he's played with this Miami team before he played in a playoff game for them so like he's familiar with the system familiar with the weapons I just like don't see a lot of ceiling with him I think they're both needed to be added in super flex leagues because starting quarterbacks don't just like happen out of nowhere uh if Dalton plays well there's a chance that he just has the role for the entire season whereas Skyler's obviously not going to have that if Tua comes back Moving down the list, we've got Hunter Henry, who is the clear tight end one on the waiver wire this week. Massive game, 12 targets, 8 catches, 109 yards. Still touchdown list on the season, but his usage is great, right? Running more than 84, 83% of the routes in this offense. He's become like the security blanket for a dude like Jacoby Brissett. They attempted, I, I heard a stat today that I think they attempted like 27 or 29 pass attempts, and five of them went to wide receivers. So Henry's a staple there. He's got a very low floor on a week-to-week -week basis, but he also has games where he'll get like three, four end zone targets, and he could be five for 50 and two touchdowns. He's going to be like a fringe tight end one going forward. He's not someone that I'm like, okay, we just saw his huge week because like Asiki, his week one wasn't good, wasn't good at all. Two catches, 18 yards. You're going to have those types of games, but uh, Henry's a good player that I think's just kind of been underrated in New England. Darnell Mooney, Nice game on Monday Night Football. He's fine. I don't think I'll ever trust him in my lineup again, but shout out Kirko. Braylon Allen would be my number one handcuff. If we had to like rank the handcuff running backs right now, it's Braylon Allen easily number one. Bucky Irving is right there, though here's the difference. Like Bucky is someone that I think has a chance to earn a bigger role in this offense as the season progresses. Whereas like Braylon Allen, sure, he had this big game, breakout game. He's only going to take situational downs away from Brees Hall because Brees Hall is getting 25 touches a game. There's a world where like Rashad White's 17, 16, 15 touches a game come down to 14, 13, 12, and Bucky's go from 6, 7, 8 to, you know, 9, 10, 11, where it becomes more of like a 55, 45 split. That's a 0% chance with Braylon Allen and Brees Hall. If Brees Hall goes down, Braylon Allen becomes probably an RB1. And I think maybe the same could be said with Bucky Irving too, but I think if we're talking about more likely to have standalone value for the rest of the season, I would put my money on, on Bucky over Braylon. But Braylon for sure needs to be owned. Cam Akers and the running back situation in Houston. So we heard good news for Joe Mixon owners that Mixon's ankle injury, which uh, we were a little bit worried that it might have been a high ankle sprain, is considered not serious and not supposed to be long term. So maybe he misses a week. I would bet against him missing two weeks, if anything. So that makes like Cam Akers, who filled in uh, but fumbled on the goal line. Dari Gumbawale split snaps. Damian, Damian Pierce was out with a hamstring injury. So when he comes back, is he back to being number two on the depth chart? It's murky. The fact that Joe Mixon is not expected to miss a bunch of time means I'm not really interested in any of these guys. They play Minnesota next week. So it's a, a, a relatively good matchup. We just saw Jordan Mason run all over Minnesota, even though, you know, obviously Minnesota came away with the win. It's really hard to decipher what's going to happen here. I guess like Damian Pierce missing the game, usually a hamstring injury forces you to miss about two games. So there's a good chance Pierce does not suit up for this upcoming game. If Mixon misses a week, then we might be looking at a Cam Akers 15-touch game. 
I don't know how this man is out here. Like, we're talking about J.K. Dobbins, ACL, and then Achilles, and looking like the second coming. Cam Akers, I don't know if y'all know this or, or remember this, but Cam Akers now has two Achilles tears over the last three years. 2021 and then last year. In week eight of last year, Cam Akers tore his Achilles. He has two Achilles tears over the last three, four years. And he's somehow out here looking like a, 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 a decent running back. So Akers should be owned. Uh, I wouldn't break the bank because Joe Mixon's injury is not considered serious. Deonta Foreman just randomly had a 14-touch a, a game in this one. 15-touch, uh, I should say. 14 carries, 42 yards, 3 yards per carry, uh, split time with Jerome Ford. He out-carried Jerome Ford 14-8, to eight, which I don't know where that came from, and I don't know why that came from, Whatever, whoever's fucking brain it came from. Jerome Ford is just infinitely more explosive. I will say, though, I will say, the Browns have been playing with without both of their starting tackles, and they're both trending towards playing this week. Uh, if not, maybe one of them, and then both of them by the next week. They get the New York Giants this upcoming week. Brian Robinson ran all over them. Like, every team runs all over them. I don't hate a Devonta Foreman pickup. Like, I'd obviously rather own Jerome Ford rest of season, but Deontay Foreman was good last year with Chicago. If they want to use a split backfield, Pierre Strong was banged up in this game, so it's possible that this becomes more of a condensed backfield. Obviously, we have no real status update on Nick Chubb. He's going to be out through week four and then possibly longer than that. Uh, but Deonta Foreman, like, listen to reports, see if he's taking snaps with the ones again, see if we expect him to get more carries with the ones. I think he's kind of a good compliment to Jerome Ford. Jerome Ford's more of like a slasher where Foreman's more of a, a bruiser. So maybe they want to use uh, Deonta Foreman in that role. And this is a really good matchup. So you obviously got to be desperate to play him in your in your lineup, but like you could do worse. Um, we did not touch on Jordan Whittington. I, I like Jordan Whittington. I drafted him a lot in like 17th to 18th round of best ball. But again, like I'm so concerned about this offensive line that I'm I'm concerned about their wide receiver one, let alone their like three or four at this point. Uh, Zach Ertz has unsurprisingly been their pass catching tight end here in Washington, playing a lot of the snaps, four for 62. So doing about four targets in back to back games, nothing to really write home about, but you could do worse at the tight end position. Alec Pierce like continues to just get it done, three for 125 in a touchdown in week one, five for 56 in a touchdown in week two. It's kind of just like a really perfect pairing with Anthony Richardson's arm. Like the shots he's getting downfield are not not fluky. Um, it's just part of what he brings to the field. And I think Josh Downs should probably return this week, which I think will be more of a detriment to Adonai Mitchell than Pierce. I think Downs will move into the slot. Pittman and Pierce will probably play the majority of their slot their snaps outside. So Alec Pierce, I think like you just kind of got to give him a little respect at this point. I don't feel good about it. Like I'm I'm sure that like one for fourteen game is coming any 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 week now. But he deserves to be rostered. Uh, Jerry Judy's over 60%, so we're not going to talk about that. Reynolds, eh. Derek Carr would definitely be the, you know, the waiver wire pickup of the week at quarterback in non-super flex leagues, right? Like I, I touched on Andy Dalton, Skylar Thompson. Those guys are not picking up in one quarterback leagues, but super flex, you target them because these types of guys are not available in super flex leagues. Derek Carr in one quarterback, I mean, you're looking at multiple 20-point performances to start the year because of Clint Kubiak's play action heavy motion heavy offense that is just elevating this entire team entire passing offense and they get uh, a nice matchup against Philly where Philly's defense has just kind of been overrated for for quite a while we just saw Kirk Cousins rip him up in the limited opportunities that uh, he was given continued down um, as long as T Higgins is out I think you might be able to desperately flex Andre Yoshivas random two touchdown game which should have been fucking T Higgins but he's yeah I mean that that usage is is uh, uh, abysmal you're talking about 1.75 yards per target they get Washington and then Carolina in back-to-back -back games so the matchups are great hopefully we get T Higgins anyone else we want to touch on the waiver wire here same as last week Gibson is a handcuff to own Alexander Alexander Madison definitely a handcuff to own that's it as we move our way down the trending down list I'll just give you a quick Yes, I would drop him. Yes, I would hold on for another week. Jeff Wilson is a drop. And I'm going to leave quarterbacks off this list to save time. Colby Parkinson, let's hold on and see what this offense looks like without Cup in it. Tank Bigsby hurt his shoulder. I don't know if we've gotten any news for him. Returned to Sunday's loss, but didn't play any offensive snaps. Bigsby suffered a shoulder injury during the second quarter on a kickoff return. He was able to return to the contest. All right, so it seems like he's okay. I would hold on to him for another week to see what his role is looks like now that he's healthy again Alan Lazard is definitely a drop for me Taysom Hill was seriously hurt so you can definitely drop him Cortland Sutton there's nothing going on in that Denver offense 
yeah, he's droppable if you need to. Justice Hill was always droppable. Julian McLaughlin, unfortunately, droppable. Greg Dortch is probably what we think Greg Dortch is. If you're in a full PPR league, I might hold on to him for another week. Uh, Adonai Mitchell, I would hold on to through Josh Downs coming back. Alexander Madison, I'm holding on to. Keon Coleman, I'm definitely holding on to. <sighs> Blake Corum. Let's hold on one more week. If this offensive line spits out another four, five, six sack performance against San Fran and another three yards per carry for the running backs, like the yards before contact is abysmal, we're going to be able to drop him most likely. Komet, you could drop. Kadon, you could drop. Emmanuel Wilson, you can drop. Deontay Johnson, definitely hold on to. Now that Dalton is in the lineup, McCaffrey is droppable. Cook is droppable. Trey Benson, I'd hold on to him if you're a James Cook owner. Uh, Tyler Johnson, hold on to. Jacoby, good match against Carolina, I'd hold on to. Ingram, definitely don't drop. Gus Edwards, oh God, Edwards is so bad, dude. 18 carries in week two, and his longest run was six yards. I'm still going to hold on to a dude that has 18 carries in a game. Marshawn Lloyd re-injured something in his lower body. He's droppable if you need the space. Strong, droppable. Mooney, hold on to. See if Kirko can get going. Cooks, hold on to. Michael Wilson, hold on to. Zeke, I'd hold on to. Dotson, droppable. Davis, uh, probably droppable. Curtis Samuel, unfortunately, droppable. Vele, droppable. Thielen, hold on to. Seeing what Dalton does. Jamal Williams, droppable. Pacheco, Throw them on the IR. Rome, definitely hold on to. All right, so that's going to wrap up the week two waiver wire as I've already yapped about. Please go take this .5 passing yard line. It is free money for Thursday night on Underdog Fantasy, okay? When you get on there, they're going to hit you with a deposit bonus up to $1,000, depending on how much you want to deposit your first time. But all you need to do in order to get the Big Dog membership for the entire season is $10, all right? So $10 will get you the free square plus another free square of CD Lamb plus the Big Dog membership plus a deposit bonus like it's it's all fucking great it's the best ten dollars you'll spend this entire football season all right i'm out of here i love you i'll see y'all tomorrow on our running back and wide receiver rankings videos smoochies